Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds bar. In other words, we say, we tell it like it is. But today, we have four panelists, four topical issues. I'll be explaining how our government has tortured its citizens with a lack of basic infrastructures, such as roads. I'm asking, is Badagri Lagos? On the other hand, Aisha, my dear sister, is dissecting our voting pattern as Nigerians. Do we vote out of fear or out of conviction, she's asking. Hmm. Bolahan sheds light on our country's business management. And he's saying if our government cannot run a business successfully, they definitely can't run a refinery. But definitely, Bolahan knows that I have a contrary opinion. Last but not the least, Treasure tells us as Nigerians to normalize honesty and stop being religious away. Well, make no mistakes, we are changing heads, sent to sow seeds of productive thinking for a better society. Allow me to lead the way right after the break. Roll with us. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Edo is not Lagos became a slogan in the last Edo governorship election held September 19, 2020, even though we moved from Edo into Lagos in droves daily in search of better life. Definitely, Edo can't be Lagos, even if both states share historic similar similarities. But should Edo work hard enough on its infrastructure, maybe someday it might be like Lagos. But my question today is, is Badagri Lagos? It took me a journey from Lagos to Badagri and subsequently from Badagri through Agbara industrial layout to Ota via Igbesa both in Ogun State to realize that Badagri is no longer Lagos or Nigeria. In fact, the deplorable state of the roads in Aba and some many other parts of the country are child's play compared to the state of the Okokomaiko to Badagri Road. A pregnant woman will surely have a miscarriage if she dare travels on that road. And no matter how good your car is, it can't last three trips on that road, I bet you. Mind you, the first story building in Nigeria was built in Badagri in the year 1845 as a mission house for slave masters with a holding place for slaves also. The town ordinarily is a historic one with a federal French college and also used to boast many tourists usually who were eager to reconnect with the slave trade history from the slave parts, the chains, to the point of no return and then the relics of that inhuman torture and journey called slave trade. One really needs to see these things to understand what Africans went through in the hands of slave masters. But more than 100 years later, the state slave master has gone though, but our leaders have worn their cloaks and are still torturing us with a dart 
of public infrastructures, inhumanity, and public stealing. Apart from the historic slave museum in Badagri, the town is the, also the gateway into Nigeria from the West African subregion. While the Benin Republic side of the road is motorable with proper security arrangement in place, as is hell on earth with several checkpoints harassing motorists for contraband goods and the usual gunja. Pull over, park, wait till you carry, or guy your boys are here. Today, tourists have deserted Badagri sites as a journey on the 60 kilometer Okokomaiko to Badagri Road is like the biblical camel passing through the eye of a needle. As same usually lasts for between five to six hours. What will it ordinary take? to fix this road within a year, if I may ask. Who costs us like this? Even the indigenous and residents of that area have cried their voice us, calling on government to fulfill their promises to them, even though they pay taxes. Lagos State Government is said to be responsible for the Gomu Okokomaiko section of the highway and awarded a contract for the rehabilitation of the road in 2008, that's about 12 years from now, while the federal government is handling the Okokomaiko Agbara and Badagri Aziz of the road at a cost of 63.023 billion naira awarded in 2019. Yet, body contractors are nowhere to be found apart from their signpost on that road. Or maybe they have forgotten that Badagri is still Lagos or Nigeria. And yet the same federal government just approved the sum of $1.9 billion for the construction of a railway line that will link Kano, Dutse, Katsina, to Jibia in Nigeria, to Maradi in the Nigeria Republic, and the government quarrel when people complain. Babantude Hompe is the member representing Badagri Federal Constituency at the Federal House of Representatives, while Senator Solomon O. Adeola is a senator representing Lagos West Senatorial District. One wonder what type of repre representation they are giving at the National Assembly when the busiest road in their constituency is not motorable. And also, what is the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawonlu doing to alleviate the suffering of not just the Lagos State Government workers that have been posted to work in Badagri, but the teeming population living in that area? I'll be Badagri, not be Lagos, I ask again. I will therefore advocate that the Lagos State Government should not wait until there is a governor who is an indigenous of Badagri to fix the road in Badagri, just like Ekwe had to wait for Ambode, who is an indigenous of Ekwe, to fix the roads in Ekwe. Lagos also should understand that the more infrastructure they build in this area, the more they are able to decongest the housing need in Lekki and Aja, and then the city centre, and then people will move to these areas. The federal government should understand that they intentionally create division and segregation amongst the masses in the country when they fast track road and rail projects in the northern part while abandoning the ones in the south, and that no matter how many times they amend the Company and Allied Matters Act for the ease of doing business, and then beautify Abuja. If the gateway to the southern part of the country from the West African subregion is not motorable, the country will always be seen by global businessmen as unconducive for doing business. Historic sites are a source of wealth in most countries. So let's utilize ours. Wake up, Nigeria. Wake up. Libby, that was a powerful one. It's also a sad commentary about what has become of our country. Um, earlier this week, I was reading some Chinese um, development books. And you know, one of the things that the Chinese did as a foundation to the development was to develop the coastal provinces and then interconnect them to the hinterland. And there's a strategy behind that. It's, it's, it's not just, you know, but I, I marvel to see that our own coastal places, <laughs> the port, the Cocoa Port, the Calabar Port, the Port Accord, the mm -hmm. Apapa, the Tinkan, mm -hmm. Badagri, have been left on their own for so long. It is, it is a shame. These are the things that will drive development. You develop those, then you interconnect back from Sokoto, Kano, from uh, Oweri, everywhere. And, and, and that Be, is because the fundamental it's even, infrastructure. It even um, allows you to move goods and services from the hinterland that to the is city. It. And then people can decide to go live in this hinterland, you know, while working in the city. If the interconnectivity is, is seamless and, you know, your infrastructures are okay, I don't see why somebody cannot live in Badagri and work in VI. 
If you have to take a train from Badagri, then take worst a train. case, you take a train, one hour, 20, 15 minutes, you are, in, you are in VI. But today, even on the road, it takes you six hours on that road. That's if you are if you can maneuver. It's, 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 it's such take a, a train or take uh, the waterways. I mean, when would life living in Nigeria be comfortable? When would people be able to move freely 60 years after? It, it, it hurts my innermost when people like us, middle-class Nigerians, the Nigerian elites travel out of this country. You just talked about China. And it's, it's almost the same thing all over the world. Transportation um, system is diverse. You have different, you know, options. Modes, yeah. But we all go out and then come back into Nigeria and we continue with status quo. Imagine that Badagri Road. You're talking of a pregnant somebody, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's worse. It is worse. Yet these people vote. That is that is the the the. the Maybe I shall, I shall would give us a perspective. And they vote. Uh, when, when so who are voting? you voting no, the for? The numbers are high there. Who are you <laughs> voting for? What are you voting for? Do you not have a voice in Lagos? And when the Lagos State Assembly sits, what do they talk about? If you have the districts, you have Ekpe, you have Ikeja, you have a, a Ikorodu, and then you have Badagri. And of all these, Badagri is there. It's the gateway, as you have said. But it's perpetually like that. I remember when I had a, a, um, a project to do along that line. It was still the same thing. It's always been the same. They're always, always, like always constructing every day. So what's, what the, what, is the, what is the benefit or dividend it's, it's, of democracy it's, 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 for the people of Badagri? Aisha. Uh, well, uh, there's a saying that uh, it's very difficult to wake up as uh, somebody who is pretending to sleep. And, and that's a uh, that's problem we have. So when that's you say wake up Nigerians, yeah, wake up. Nigerians are not ready to wake up. We, we want to sleep while we are sleeping. We wake up, we wake, we open our eyes and things will magically uh, be, be okay. So that is the main, uh, the main issue. The question we need to ask, who are the people that live in Badagri? You find out that it's not the elite. It's not the who is who. So they really don't care. It's about what we have right now where there's, uh, there's uh, an air route that's uh, going off between Abuja to Kaduna. Uh, the government can no longer secure the roads. Uh, the trains aren't secured anymore. So what's going to happen? The elite have simply taken uh, their business and they're going to fly. So leaving the people who, are, who don't have the money to fly to, to fly those roads and be at the mercy of kidnappers and bandits, it's simply the same thing. When it is time to vote, they will remember that there are people in Badagri that will come out and vote. And guess what? The same people in Badagri, the, the same set of people will come in, they will vote for them, they will give them their mandate, they will not insist on this road being done. Like, like you know, people will say they don't want to waste their vote, yet they are wasting their vote, voting in people who don't have the mm -hmm. empathy, who mm -hmm. don't have integrity to do what they say they're, they're going to do. And this will, con with this will continue to go on. But you know, one of the things you said that really struck me was the fact that when you said the development, uh, you know, infrastructural development is going on in the south, uh, in the north, mm -hmm. more than in the south. But then guess what? Other people from the north are saying that the, the <laughs> infrastructural <laughs> development is going on in the south and not in That's the north. Not true. At the end of the day, there's no uh, uh, it's not going on anywhere. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not going on anywhere. It just we are all in the same boat and we are facing this incompetence. And we need to do something about the incompetence. Uh, but, well, uh, you, you see, it's quite unfortunate, really. It's, it's really, really unfortunate. Um, you know, why those here think it's going up up there? Those up there think it's going on. No, but, but for my but, my, but my, my that mine, that will is also this. be the politicians no, sowing that. But mine, mine, mine really is the fact that you know why you have awarded a contract here, and there is nothing happening on site. You have awarded another one for train construction to Niger Republic, and and so, you know, um, and that's why you see every region wants a president you know, they can call their own because it's almost as if when you are a president, you know, you, you award, you then push, to your you know, attract, side of, yeah, you know, to your contract side to your country. sides of the country. Oui. But, but, but you see, when Gulag Jonathan was head of uh, president, it was almost as if he was only the president of the Jaws, that South South was now in Jaws. So you, <laughs> but, saw, but you, you see, see them everywhere. Pretty much but he was unable thing. to fix that same road. Pretty much the same road. thing you talked about Lagos. When Ambode was there, he, he was made Ekpe. sure he did the roads for Ekpe. And seriously, if you go to Ekpe, Ekpe looks beautiful. Yes. I mean, to, to link Ijebode, it's just massive, 
beautiful drive down. I, I, I understand I um, think the Ogun State man is also starting from there like to continue. That's what we are asking for. That sort of thing, continue. But you see, it doesn't have to be an ambody that will come and do that at Ekwe. That is the problem. You we know? don't, there are no specific mandates and deliverables for these political leaders. No, no. no. I'll give you another, another, another example. Do we of, as a people even have a blueprint for what we want? Development in our, in our communities. That is, that is we the question. Do not. So if there are no specific mandates, it means that when I get there, I will do what I think pleases me or what will serve my political interest later on in the future, and then I, I, I leave the place. Because we do not insist on we manifestos. We do not insist on manifestos. We do not even we insist you know, on You know the way manifestos campaign. come up in Nigeria? Somebody else is writing it, not the visioner. The visioner doesn't even have an input. It, it is when he, he... He doesn't know what you have written there. It is when you are elected a governor that you now say, okay, hey, please let me put a team together. What yes. do we do? What do we do? Uh, give me a vision. <laughs> give me what we can do. What are the... Because you know? the people don't but care. The people do not... I shall... I shall... I shall... I shall... I shall, I shall, I shall in the, within the, those who are elected, even even in normal places, organization para starters, the moment somebody gets there at the head, if it's your tribe, then automatically it's as if everybody from that either town or that region mm -hmm. get into there. It's because of the fact that we have this nepotism, it's so ripe in our, in our country, and it, things are not based, are done based on merit, they are ba done based on who do you know. So that is the major uh, uh, problem. So that's the reason why people will want their own person to be there, even though, even if that person is not competent, just so that they'll be able to get dividends, whether it's dividends of democracy or dividends of having the person in that position in the first place. Dividends of stomach infrastructure. I wish they would replicate it, you know, in physical infrastructure. Well, it's no more news that our leaders, you know, hardly give us what we want. After the break, I shall resist the topical issues in that same line. The power of our vote cannot be overemphasized, and I'm asking, when will Nigerians vote out of conviction rather than out of fear? One of the common phrases one hears during election period amongst the electorate is, I don't want to waste my vote. For the average electorate, voting for a candidate not from the two dominant parties is a waste. Many do not realize that voting for a candidate just because one thinks that the candidate will be the one to win, rather than voting because the candidate is the most qualified, is the real waste. It seems that many are more interested in being part of the winning team and being euphoric for the win than in the governance that is to come from the candidate voted. To many, Election is like being a fan of a football club. And what is most important is the euphoria of one's team winning. <laughs> That's what it is to them. While the winnings and the loss of a football club does not have a far-reaching effect on your life, that of election does. It is not enough that your candidate won. The capacity of the candidate to deliver good governance has far-reaching effect on your life and the generation unborn. So the real waste of vote is not choosing candidates based on their competence, character, and capacity. That is the real waste. As long as citizens are afraid to vote their conviction because they are afraid to be on the losing team, then fear will continue to be a deciding factor and people will continue to choose the so-called lesser evil. There is no less in evil. Evil is simply evil. It is time for Nigerians to leave behind the shackles of fear and dare to choose the best rather than lesser evil. It is time to begin to choose the most competent candidate rather than the candidate that is most likely to win. The competent candidates don't have structures. Their parties don't have structures is the statement often heard. Who or what is the structure? The people are the structure. You and I are the structures. And if we identify the candidates who are competent, we can begin to be their structures. It is like network marketing. We tell one person, who tells another, and we begin to sell the candidates of competence rather than the candidates likely to win. We have to give something to get something. We need to donate to these competent candidates 
So we do not let those who have looted our collective world to use that money to perpetuate themselves in office. We need to volunteer to be their agents and ensure we are their structures. All that is needed is a bit of sacrifice. And like they say, nothing good comes easy. If we do not take our destinies into our hands, we'll continue to be at the mercy of power brokers who continue to use different slogans to whip up sentiments and give us the illusion of power in our hands. It is either fight against corruption or God for darism, or another catchy slogan. They have many that they will give us. The two major parties, they have no incentive to put forth candidates that are competent. They would rather put forth candidates they can control and continue business as usual. You have to make up your mind to leave the fear that have had you bound for over 20 years and ensure it is now business unusual. Yes, um, quite um, very catchy words. Uh, there for me, I, I, I completely, this has been my conviction, mm. but I also have a problem um, with uh, the political parties. Okay. Um, I had said this consistently to whoever cared to, to listen, that uh, the people won't just come to you. You will have to go to the people. Yes, I always, you often hear of, ah, I don't want to waste my vote. If you as popular as you are, when you talk, people call you, oh, please come and intervene. Oh, where are the human rights lawyers? The day you come out to contest for election, they will tell you that you won't win, like Aisha had said, that uh, you don't have structures. But they forget that they are, they are your structure. That structure <laughs> is money. No, 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 no. Because they expect the, you to wait, breach their palms. The politicians, no, the politicians didn't just have money today or just have structures if the people didn't vote for them. Mm. It is the people that are the structures. So if, when Mimiko won in, in Ondo, it is the people that voted for him. Under the Labour Party. Yes. Now that, you know, APC sees themselves as, oh, look, we're the stronghold in Edo, and PDP had won the election. It is the people that voted. It is the people that are those structures. And like she has said, it is when, um, like we say in Wari, uno takunu, mouth, ten mouths, mm. that, you know, structures, you build structures. But the problem I have with the political parties, like I said, is the fact that, you can't sit down, the fringe parties. You can't sit down and expect and people to embrace you to because they are I, looking I for think, alternative. Quickly, I think we're assuming like, that they're sitting down. No, they are. They are. Take, for example, Edo. That's what I'm saying they are. Kinsley Morgan, who contested the election in 2019. Fela Duro Toye. These were big names, you know. But one would have expected. You didn't win. In Edo, you go to Edo as a politician. Go to Edo. Start to galvanize the people to support your candidates. What if they so didn't that have any strong candidates in that place? How will you, you are a politician even, who even, hope even to be a president? Even if they are not talking about backing a candidate, they, they have visible, opinions, yeah, yes, about with their topical opinions. issues that are going on in the polity. Lend a voice to it. So be a voice that people get to hear all the time. And you, you are there in their memory. Don't wait till it is eight election. months to the next election. Then you stand up and, 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 and you start looking for Nigeria. You, you know, because you've been missing in action for the last three and a half years. That is the problem. You can't just etch your, yourself in their the, mind all of which it is overnight. What we see the fringe parties as you yes. call them do all, all the time. All of the time. I, the time. I also think. However, I think I want to lay the blame um, uh, with the people now. Even we, the people, just as Aisha said, are we voting out of fear or are we voting out of conviction? Sometimes, as she has said, it's because we just want to belong to the winning team. <laughs> Who you vote for, I don't know be Lagos. I don't know be Lagos. I don't know be Lagos. And gloat about it. And gloat mm. of, over it. But really, if you look at it, these two candidates, were they the best? Would we not, of the fringe parties, would, didn't I, we I have want to other ask you, people? you that is in the media, mm. name, apart any from these two one. candidates, name any other candidates. Well, I've, I, I was looking at them on TV, but I really never... You didn't see them. No, I saw you them. You have to. Aisha said something. You cannot wake up somebody who's pretending to be sleeping. It's Bam. deep. A candidate who is not asleep but pretending to be sleeping. You will tap him you, and tap you will, him and You tap will him. tap and tap and tap. Because he's not serious. But if a candidate is serious in an election... In 2016 Edo election, we saw the APGA 
Abga candidate, Osaron Naiwu. Mm -hmm. He came out, he was very vociferous. Even the governor from um, Anambra came to support him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he could come a distant third. After the election, he went to sleep. If immediately after the election, they consistently, you know, um, uh, what do you call it now? Give alternative to how government should be run. Like Abga, at the heard. national Are level. Are in the face of yeah. the people? Yeah. Which was what Alajilai Mohammed did. Which was what PDP, For APC, which was what them PDP there. did in Edo State. Mm -hmm. Chief Dan Obi consistently was on Oshomole's neck for eight years. Mm. You know, but when you don't, you just go to sleep. You wake up six months to a national election and you want uh, to be president. Uh, of le, le, me, if, I may, if I may just come in, uh, I, I totally agree with you where you talk about the fact that some of these parties, they just they just stay by and some of these candidates just feel that at the end of the day, uh, it's when it's time for election that they will come and they are asking for the people to vote for them. But then at the same time, again, there's something that we do. We actually shame good people out of politics. We yes. shame competent people out of politics. You right. see people who are always talking about Nigerian issues, who are always talking about either state issues or whatever, when it's time for politics and they want to go into politics, they are shamed out of it. Oh, you know, what are you doing? You're supposed to be an activist. You're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be that. And you find that most times the people who are actually speaking on Nigerian issues, when we are talking about, you know, having, for example, the alternative candidates, we sideline them. We look for people who don't even care about the issues that are happening in Nigeria. Those are the people we are always propping up. So this right. is one major yeah. issue. Another issue I would also like to talk about, you know, uh, Treasure uh, earlier said something about the structure being money. It's not really money. It's people. We need to understand that the people that are actually collecting money uh, during elections, they are not that many. But there are a lot of people who don't bother to come out to vote because they don't believe in the system. And if you can get enough of those people coming out to actually put there will be a major uh, a major uh, you know a change and let me give you an example how many votes uh, how many people voted for somebody to be governor in Edo state less than 400,000 people and I'm sure maybe there are over 400,000 people who didn't even bother to come out on that election day. These are some of the things that we need to do. At this moment, we have an unusual situation. Right. So we're supposed to yeah. praise. We're supposed to turn this up, upside okay. down. It's no longer a moment of uh, that we say, oh, let's just wait by this side. Whichever candidate comes in with this side. Let's begin, even we ourselves, look for these candidates right now. By now, we should know who are the people we want at the National Assembly, who are the people we want in all the states. I Taking over the discussions from us. It is your script. It is your script. It is your script, but you have done the discussion. You have done the dissecting. And um, well, uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> but I it's a, it's totally a agree with it. Vote out of conviction, not fear. We all have the responsibility to vote out of conviction and not out of fear. I'm up next after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Our government has no business with business. And I'm saying, now that we are finally here, those FGN refineries. It was a major headline in most Nigerian dailies a couple of days ago that the vice president said, government has no business running refineries. I was pleasantly amused on one side, but also sad and annoyed at the same time. I have tried as much as possible to avoid saying some bitter truths on the subject matter of government refineries because it is still a burning emotional issue with Nigerians. And sometimes when the emotions are flowing may not be the right time to hit home a truth that is against the flow of those emotions. But if the VP had decided to go there, who am I to resist? 
Let us put all the cards on the table once and for all and have some frank discussions. And a starting point is to ask the question, how many government businesses are sustainable? Sustainable will mean it covers its own cost and leaves some profits to drive its growth without annual government subventions. We cannot even print our own money. Though the Nigerian government has a security printing and minting corporation, we import our own currency. Not NMPC has been speared from the periodic story of being broke and unable to meet its obligation. As that when due, that happens from time to time. Where is Nigerian Airways? Not even the Virgin Nigeria or Air Nigeria variant survived. As a monopoly in this country, Nitel depended on government to survive. After almost a century of its existence, it's managed to build up to 720,000 lines. Today, the private operators have among them a total of 199 million lines. We had an option to have been waiting for the day Nitel would provide us with the telecom service we have today. Essentially, it is an established fact that government, our government, cannot run business successfully. So if we have a government that has not been known to run any business successfully, where did we get the faith that it will run refineries successfully? The first time I showed interest in what was going on with the refineries was in 1998, when the late Abacha regime was making some huge spend on turnaround maintenance of our refineries. Abdul Salami, who came after him, also spent some money on the same exercise. Dito OBJ, Yaradua, GEJ, and PMB. Even over the last 13 months, the sum of 85 billion was reported to have been spent on two of the refineries without producing anything. If we have continued to spend billions every year on these refineries for 25 years, and they are still not working, so at what point should we review that position and take a new decision? If this was somebody's personal business, will he be pouring hundreds of billions into it, into this leaking basket for 25 years? The answer is no. So why do we think that because it is government, it should continue to waste money on these refineries? Now that the government has taken a 180 degrees turn and finally accepted that government has no business running refineries, Maybe we can move ahead and forget about the fact that it took so long and cost so much money before we got here. But then we're here. I wish to advocate that we transparently transit these refineries to private operators. For indeed, government has no business with business. Uh, Bolaho, first and foremost, I want to ask the question. <clears throat> if government has no business, this government have no business in business, then they don't have any business in government. Being gov in, gov in Dubai. Yes. In Dubai. What they do, they don't say we have wasted money so much, and, and so uh, let us just hands up. In Saudi Arabia, they don't say, oh, we are spending money, we are not seeing results. When you spend money stupidly, there will never be results. If you like, let it be private business. So at what point does stupidity let me, get let cut me, off? Let me mm. finish. Let me finish. When this government was campaigning, they told us, instructed the same vice president, that you don't have a problem with the refineries. What you have is that money that is meant to turn around refineries goes into private pockets. Okay. So what, and that what we need is to plug loopholes and everything would work. And now, you, this 85 billion that you're talking about that has gone into private pocket, Kaduna refinery, government has spent money and yet didn't refine one drop. And I have not heard that government investigated how those monies were spent. It's the same old thing. And what, it is the same story. It's the same old when thing. somebody is inefficient and inept at his job, he now creates excuses. Oh, we just realized that we don't have business in, in business. Look, mm. now government is building railway line. They don't have business in business, so, but they are building railway line. They will tell you, no government has a stake in this. Tomorrow they will tell you, Oh, look, we don't have business in this business, so we can't manage it. Okay, so what the, about there accountability? Is no, there is nowhere, even if in a private business, 
If there is no accountability, the business will go down the drain. What we have here is a lack of accountability, lack of transparency. We're talking about power. And he, he, power here is, quickly. Here is power. the question, quickly. Libby. Because, is, I mean, quickly, let, let, quickly. Let me throw something. So We're you talking can about take it power. Along with it. We, have, we have privatized. Here we when are. we privatized, people came and they bought into our uh, Jenkos, our discos. Mm. And today they are telling us they didn't know the problems were this enormous. We still have to, these are private businesses now, we still have to fleece the masses to ensure to that things. they are working almost 10 years down the line. These same refineries we privatized, Obasan just sold, and they said, oh, look, just give us a few, few weeks. In 20. Uh, um, uh, in 2018, mm. in 2018, yes. Ibe knowing fully well all of this, government had no business in business, yeah. told us that by May 2019 our refineries would be working. Because in because that is what you wanted to no, hear. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Been telling us what because we yes, because that as at that is, time, as at that time, say Libby. at that time, Bola and Wade. Yes. As I'm, at that I'm time, waiting. you have done research on this. It is yes. your script. Allow us. Yes. You know, because at that time, mm -hmm. according to him. What they just need to do is to plug loopholes. How come we are not talking about government plugging loopholes? You okay, see? let's hear from Aisha. Let's hear from okay, Aisha. Aisha, can you weigh in on this? So, uh, uh, so for me, uh, the first thing that I want to ask is that when the vice president spoke, was he speaking on behalf of government or was he just speaking on his own behalf? Because one of the things for me, and I find it highly irritating, is the fact that the president consistently tells us the things that are wrong. He's the number two citizen in Nigeria. He is part of government. He shouldn't be telling us things that are wrong or things. He should be doing it. And I totally agree with Bola Hope. Government has no business in business. Government should focus on issues like taxing, giving uh, the right policies, uh, securing lives and properties. I know, you know, giving us laws, enabling, giving us enabling environment. environment for businesses to thrive. You talk about this, uh, the issue of uh, a refinery every year is the same slogan. I'm sorry to say, I equate it as the as the co as the corporate and legal 419 business we have in Nigeria. <laughs> when any government that comes, what was the first thing NFC will tell us? They will start refining refining at full capacity. And we continuously buy that over. So because they know we are accepting, we are citizens who are dosa. We don't make demands. We don't ask for accountability and transparency. We don't we don't put government uh we, we don't put government on his toes and say, this is what you said before, you aren't doing it. Why aren't doing it? Because nobody cares. People just want to pray for Nigeria to be good, but they don't want to do the right thing. So that's why consistently this things are happening. For me, the refineries, we don't have any business there. Nigeria should let it go, even if it means the workers, right? NNPC workers, can we nobody, just dash them to the refineries saying, and don't say, let all of you, go. take it and go. Nobody is saying don't Buy, let the refineries refine this go. Product, pay the your salary, is, sell it to sorry, Nigeria, Aisha. sell it to other private <laughs> and then get away from it. Nobody it, is saying carry, don't let it go. It's a drain on the nation. The question is, even if you let it go, the, 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 the uh, electricity that we let go, this what government today is complaining that all oh, those who sold it to I think we also, government without we also accountability, we, we, we didn't get go the right way. We, we, we didn't we talk, privatize we the electricity about, the way we should we, have. It was, you know, this, uh, see, how do I put it? Man, no man know, kind of thing. And that's see, why it's Seriously, Aisha, we talk about here, you're, you're talking about West Nigeria Airways. Do you know, I, I, I traveled from Lagos to Dubai, Dubai to New York. And Airbus A380, mm. you know, in Dubai, they have more than 200 pieces of it. Yeah. 200. Do you know why they were able to acquire that much? Accountability. Oh, sure. Not sloganeering. Oh. It's when, you come, when you come, mm. you say, you come, you tell people what they want to hear. Now, the vice president is still telling you what you want to hear. Government has no business in business. And, and so, and then and as see, forward see, as see, as the questions are still there <laughs> unanswered. If for 25 years, out of these 25 years, you had two military governments, Abacha and Abdul Salami, <laughs> you had two for another presidents, 25 years, two presidents who were former military the and then civilian, so they have come there. And, uh, see, what if I it is not working, you, it is not what working. I am telling Let's you is walk out of accountability. it. Accountability. Okay, yeah, so when when are you going to get that accountability? 
Why is ineptitude fix accountability? We could, I shall wait. We could have been waiting for accountability still, on night You will still today. be waiting for it. Are we not waiting? Are we, are not we not waiting for accountability on night Right in the studio now, we are huh? running on generation. Lib, Lib. <laughs> so we have, moving we have, forward, what do we do? When you say what accountability, you. what do you, what See, should we do? What should Leave do government with I it? I shall talk about voting out of conviction. I talked about government being accountable to the people. And then people should also learn to hold government accountable. If yeah. you like, privatize the refinery. They're not going to privatize it to you. They'll privatize to themselves. And then they continually give you these examples of, oh, government have no business in business. Once you have a system where there is no accountability, there is ineptitude reign supreme, you're going to have all of these slogans. What we have are slogans. Let's oh. begin to look for solutions. Okay. Well, um, it's best our government give those refineries to the relevant bodies and stop meddling in business activities. We appreciate you sharing your opinions with us. Itebo Abraham is in support of Liberia's last advocacy. Nigeria, can we ever agree? As he says, even if you divide Nigeria into 100 countries, our problem will still be with us. We all need behavioral programming. Whereas Niji Bangwe also says we shall definitely get to that tipping separation point one day. Thank you, Itebu Abraham and Niji Bangwe. We appreciate your participation with us on our conversations. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Treasure asks us to stop being religious. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. In furtherance of my Nigeria at 60 series, I search for the honest amongst us in what I title Wanted a Righteous Nigerian. Fellow advocate Saidu Bishara once said, if religion were a currency, African nations would be the wealthiest of all. What is baffling is that despite this assertion, the dishonest and mockers of the honest are in multitudes. Japan sings the praises of a Nigerian PhD student who returns a lost purse. The Nigerian government recognizes him at home for being honest. Individuals fall over themselves to congratulate him. Good script, right? wrong. From John Weke in Japan to Achi Daniel, Francis Emekwako, security guards at Mutala Mohammed International Airport, to random cab drivers, the soldier who returned $41,000, and Joseph Unugu, a cleaner at the same MMIA, who claimed she had returned different amounts of money running into millions, and who particularly wanted recognition for it. The furore hard desire generated on Twitter was both interesting and disturbing for a nation with a religious culture like ours. We celebrate one honest man or woman as if we're saying, wow, look at that righteous one in a nation of rogues. We celebrate Nigerians who return lost money so vigorously when it should be the exception not to do that, given our religiosity. Our corrupt status is legendary, in spite of the huge worship centers of the major faiths across the country. On WhatsApp platforms nowadays, religion is a big issue. We inundate everywhere with piety when we lack character majorly. The Omoluabi philosophy in Yoruba land transcends religious affiliation. An Omoluabi is expected to display humility, good-naturedness, bravery, diligence, honesty, among others. 
and Omolu Abim must give to his community in words, deeds, and in action. It is similar to Aristotle's theory of virtue ethics that sees moral virtues as the basis for the common good. The Greeks have a similar concept that determines the morality and immorality of an act in the society. We can't keep dozing on opium. As they say, religion is the opium of the people. We need to come clean. We need a collective rehab from the superficiality of religion to its practicality. The law of awareness is setting in steadily in many quarters across this country. People are beginning to see that religiosity is taking us no anywhere. John C. Maxwell says the first step towards change is awareness. I am therefore advocating that we normalize honesty and make finding huge sums of money a culture and not an exception. This is a task for us, the people, to build this nation. Hmm. Pastor uh, Bolahan and uh, <laughs> Chief... Uh, <laughs> Chief... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Pastor Mrs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, we are, we are a country of highly religious people, but less godly. Mm. Um, so, and that's why, um, this morning I was discussing with a friend, um, Suleiman Alede, and um, he, he said there are troubles everywhere. Uh, there are problems everywhere. Once you solve one, another one would raise its ugly head. And I said, yes, these are messages we should be preaching in our religious centers. He said of uh, giving the impression that, oh, once you are, you know, religious, you know, all your problems are solved. And mm -hmm. so, if the problems are not solved in this center, then move to the next one. That's why you see people jumping from church to church looking for that God that is, you know, right there Elusive, with them. It is the same thing. I once had a friend who was into, was schoolmate though, who left school, you know, was one of those boys that embraced um, um, 419 and then he became big. While we were searching for a job, he already had an apartment, living big, you know, sometimes we go to his house. He has a corner where he smokes in their hand. And then, but he had one very big Bible and he sits in front in the church. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, you know what? Imagine. I pay my tithes regularly and that's why God is blessing me. And I looked at him and I said, so you pay your tithe from fraudulent money and then you think, he said, yes, that's what his pastor told but him. And that, that, that the pastor, that, you know, they don't joke with him in his church. In one of his Pentecostal churches, I don't want to mention their names. But you know, like it them. happened back then. Some bank, bank, bank uh, leaders at that time were the big guys in a certain yes, church. Yes, Akimbola was the one, one of the biggest guys in Redeem. So we shouldn't hide it. Ah. You know, it's a notorious fact. And then we fact. know what happened at the end you know, of the day. It's, so, it's, it's there. so that's why you have people who rather, well, that's why you chase, we chase after money. Even culturally, long, like those that, I remember growing up, mm. you go to Lagos and six months down the line, you bring a car. Your father won't allow you into his house. What did you do? How did how you get, did you how make did you this get money? the money? I know what it takes to buy a car, but today, you just left with it's, day it's, and it's, it's totally now, different now. But now, <laughs> they will give you a title. Ah, I, 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 I listened to a, a testimony some years ago in a church, a Pentecostal church as well. And the person was talking about her brother who went to Malaysia and has started sending home cars. And my friend just looked at me. He said, your brother is a thief. <laughs> Your brother but is there you are. There were people who were already clapping and thanking God for 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 the miracle of brother went to Malaysia and started sending cars. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe Aisha has. Uh, <laughs> Aisha a, must a, have something for us. <laughs> well, uh, I think Levi said it all. We are a religious uh, but God, uh, godless nation. Uh, so for us, it's about the religiosity. You know, doing it, the showmanship of faith. So we did this religious, competi uh, relig uh, religious competition, uh, which religion is more than and everything. And we forget that, you know, the godly part of, of, of it all. And I think one of the things we need to understand is that we have religious leaders. I call them religious slave owners. These are people who continuously need slaves. Are under them, so they would do anything, and they sell this gospel of prosperity. If you come to my place, either my church or my mosque or something, then you, you you're going to be prosperous. Those who don't come in are the ones that that don't have it. We seem to forget as a, as a people that the greatest miracle that God gave us is our brain, and we need to use it. So people are waiting for you know for 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 this miracle to to come and happen. But, you know, talking about the issue of uh, being righteous or being honest, 
There are a lot of good people. There are a lot of honest people in Nigeria. It's just that we, it, it's, it's the tyranny of a, a minority. We have minorities that are vocal who have come to a place whereby they're the ones who are celebrating their corruption. They're celebrating their wrongdoing to the extent that the, the incorruptible ones, the ones who are doing the right thing, the ones who are doing things with integrity are being shamed in our society and we need to do something about it. So it's a vocal, it's a vocal minority that we have out there. But I think for me, one of the things, and, and I totally agree, Nigerians need to re reduce their religiosity. We need to tone down on it. It's not about carrying this religion on our head. Like I always say to people, I don't want you to tell me what religion you are. Let me see it in your action. Yeah. Let's, that's the reason why we don't make demands. So we sit down, we're praying, and I always say that it seems as if Nigerians think that they have the patent to pray us. We refuse to do what we need to do. <laughs> we are praying to God. Like the other day, we saw video of a, 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 a group of people who were actually praying for a transformer that is false. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was just seeing somebody <laughs> praying for you know, a woman to who God is there. That, that woman, that is a very fat I mean, are you guys Pastor okay? Was saying, you people think that you wait, own I God. You you Jesus. Jesus. I, I, I totally agree. Please, we need to just carry, everybody should make ready for their personal business. I don't want to know exactly. where you it's are, a personal which religion thing. you are. It's a personal uh, thing. Do it. It's your relationship with God. After all of us, now, 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 now different graves will enter at When we reach there, we go say as the team. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> receive your healing now. Yeah, yeah. receive it. <laughs> the end sick. always seems to come too soon on The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Aisha, bye. <laughs> Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.